Hi everyone, welcome back to another Facebook Horizon tutorial. I'm so looking forward to showing you this one. It is the first script you should ever learn or really should ever use, and it is the Respawn script. So here we are in the Cenote Zapote, one of the worlds I've been working on recently, and I actually visited this in real life, so I wanted to share it with everyone. But the, as you can see, it's a relatively small world. It would be very easy for someone to fall off. So if someone walks off this edge here, you'll see they respawn back here at the original spawn location. And this applies for more than just falling off a ledge like this, but this also applies when there's other areas that if someone gets out of bounds, for instance, there's this kind of secret jump area here. And if you jump off, you'll see that when you fall, you also respawn. So it's very important to have multiple respawns as needed for your world to make sure players are not getting trapped in trees, not getting trapped falling off the world and landing at the bottom of the world and just being stuck there. So this respawn code is so important and we really believe it should be included on every single Horizon world. But until then, here's how to do it. It's very simple. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, so starting right into it, we have when event trigger is entered with player, then respawn player on spawn. You'll notice we have an object variable labeled spawn. Now let's go ahead and create this from scratch. And I'm going to do that by closing out of this. So we're going to start by going into our gizmos, grabbing a script. Let's go and enlarge that script. Now we're going to go inside. Once inside the script, we don't need when world is started, so you can grab that, pull down for delete. We'll go ahead and rename this and we'll call this one respawn. Now when trigger is entered by player, so we're going to be creating a trigger and when a player walks into that or they touch it with their hand, they're going to be respawned. So let's go ahead and grab the response. So it's under the motion tab. And if you scroll down, you'll see there is player motion and respawn player. Perfect. Now that we respawn player, what we need to do is respawn it with parameter player. So grab the duplicate and pull down player. So if you go to the right, grab duplicate, pull player down. And now we're going to respawn that not on self because this is on the trigger object. So this code will run on a trigger. So we need to create a new object. We go to new variable hit object, and then we're going to go ahead and type in uh, spawn point. Okay, there we go. So we've got our spawn point. So we'll drag that over and change that to happen. So we're going to respawn the player on the spawn point. So whatever we set the spawn point to, that's where we're going to respawn. That's it. That's the code. It doesn't get more simple than that. So now we just need to create two more things. So we're going to go down here and let's say, um, the player ends up over here in this corner. And this is gonna be like a little secret area of the cenote. And if the player ends up right here, so we're gonna build this slightly large trigger. And I don't want it to be super easy to get to. I really want it to be kind of like a hidden little Easter egg. And we'll build it up high. So anyone who's trying to jump on top of this, you can see this is the lowest area. So I imagine someone might wanna jump up here. So anyone who's trying to get into this area and get up on top, we're going to allow them to get on top. So we built this trigger and now we're going to grab a spawn point and we're going to go ahead and place the spawn point right up here on top. You can see this little iguana, super cute. And now we can close out of this and go into our trigger, open up the properties. We're going to go grab that and pull that up here just for easy and we'll enlarge that. All right. So we've got our properties and we can see that it is triggering. Yes, it is triggering on players, not objects. So that's perfect. And now we are attaching the respawn script. And now we need to drag this over to our respawn point. So we grab the little doohickey here, drag it into here. Now, while we're doing this, I want to talk about a couple quick features that you can see in here. We have player gravity. So if you want to make gravity really intense, you can do that. If you want to make player speed or really light, include it also, you can also do the opposite, make it really light. We can also change player speed to make them fast or slow. So we're going to leave that on the defaults and we are going to spawn and start. No, we do not want this to be the default spawn. So there we go. That's how we adjust that. Go ahead and close out. All right. So we have created our script. We've got our trigger. We've got a respawn point. So this is going to work. Now let's go ahead and reset our world. And we're going to go hit stop, reset, and play world. And now we're going to come in as a player. There is one error that could happen. So let's see what happens. All right, so this, this has happened quite a bit, and it's definitely a glitch that needs to be fixed in Horizon, but it's where when the newest, um, newest spawn point you create, 
is where the players are going to spawn when they first join. So it's a quick and easy fix. And like that, we can see that the code has recompiled correctly. So it was as simple as leaving and coming back. But the other option is that you can just delete the original spawn point and recreate it, assuming you haven't already been working on it for some time. So as you can see, I had a lot of triggers, but now it is working. And if we go back to play mode, there we go. So it works. Now let's go try and see if that has worked out. So we're going to jump over here, run past the snorkels. And if we put our hand in or any part of our body, we respawn up at the top. How nifty is that? Now we've got this amazing view. No one else is going to know how to get up here. It's a really cool Easter egg, but there's so much more you can do with this. As you're probably already thinking, you could make a house that only people who get to the door can like teleport into rather than having an opening door. Or you could have perhaps something you jump into and then it teleports you somewhere else. There are so many cool ways to use this. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. And feel free to ask if you have any questions. And uh, just a little Easter egg here. <sighs> There's a quick example of how you can use it. So in this case, I have it set to check if someone's wearing a hat, and if they are, then they get teleported to an underground area like this. And then if we come back up and go through the blue, we have another trigger which respawns us to the top. And you too can soon be creating scripts like this. It's so simple. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, and thank you so much for stopping by. Bye. Oh my gosh, what are you still doing here? You wanted extra content? Okay, 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 I give it. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make splashes coming off. And I'm not gonna go super in depth because you're gonna be able to figure this out really easy, but look at right here. We have what's called the Zapote trigger. And my Zapote trigger is the one that allows you to spawn down below. So let's go take a look and see what this code's doing. So here we can see that when the trigger is entered with player, same code as before, we have this action, moving to the foot of a player on Zapote FX. Well, Zapote FX is a variable recreated, it's very similar to the teleport variable, which is called a, which is an FX variable. So we put it in here as an object, and then when we're inside of the trigger, we tie it to the effect. And the effect is this giant orange, this giant orange block. And so when the effect goes off, it teleports to the foot of the player, and then it goes off and makes a nice splash. Next up, we have this other code that's running. So there's always a splash running, no matter what. But we run an if statement, which is if the snorkel equals the user's persistent variable wearing for value of on player, which is the player from up here. Remember how we dragged that before with the duplicate tool to find out the uh, player for the respawn? We've also done that for the foot of the player. And now we're using it to find out if the player is wearing anything. And I'll show you how we're going to create pre user pre persistent variables soon because they're very powerful and you're definitely going to start using them as soon as possible. And now we do run the action respawn player on Zapote Grotto, which is just another respawn point down below. And we, the best part about this is we can use this effect again on the, on the trigger down below in the Grotto. So you make another trigger, you run the exact same script, so you can just duplicate this, it checks to make sure they're wearing a snorkel, or if you don't want to make sure they're wearing a snorkel, use your original spawn code, which you use when you put the person falling off the world, and they will then just be teleported no matter what, even if they've taken off their snorkel, which is honestly what we've done here, because if they had to be wearing a snorkel and they took it off or fell off, it would not be a good situation. I don't want anybody getting stuck in the grotto, am I right? <laughs> anyway, so this is really easy code. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to ask. But you're asking right now, how do I create user persistent variables? Well, it's super easy. We go into our settings icon over here, and now we go into the settings. We go here under zoom in. We go into player variables, and you'll notice you can create new player variables. You have five totals. So they're very expensive. Highly recommend using them for only things you want to know, uh, which like wearing is very important in this world, but you might want to use scores for another world. So you click new, and we'll call this one <laughs> scores. And then we've now saved that. So that's how you create one. And once you've created that variable, you can now use it in your code. And now that we're back in the Zapote trigger, we're going to grab this if statement again, because you're probably wondering, you know, I've never created an if statement. How do I do that? So you pull your if statement down, make sure it's not indented on the wrong thing. So now we go if, we grab an equal sign. And now we want to find out what is snorkel. Snorkel 
is the number one. So see, we've defined every different object you can wear with a different number. So if you're wearing the snorkel, that means one. So we grab snorkel, and it says if snorkel is equal to what the player's wearing. So we go down here, click get player persistent variable, put that in here, click there, change it to the wearing. So now it's checking to see what they're wearing. And since we've defined snorkel as one, and wearing will change when the player puts on the object, we can then duplicate the player, and that's how we check it. But how do we set it when the person puts on the player or on the snorkel, right? That's a good question. So let's go take a look at that. So now we're going to go down to our snorkel code. And this is called what's attached, because it doesn't have to be just used on a snorkel. We can use this code on anything. So this is going to be very powerful if you're making a world with a lot of different objects. So what we're going to do is when world is started, we're setting the original position to position of self. Some of this stuff is really higher level that you don't necessarily need to do. I have this so it'll return to its original position in original rotation. So we set the original position, which is just a vector uh, variable, and we set the original rotation, which is a rotation variable, all created in that variable tab, to the position and rotation of self. And that's on when world is started. Then when event attached start, so that's when, that's from over here. So when the object is attached to the player, then we cancel sending my event so that we're not sending it over and over again. And we'll get into that in a moment. But then we set wearing, so this is that same from right here, we can click set player persistent variable. Works very similar. You just put the item number. So the item number can be set in the variables on every single item. So you can use this code over and over again. So inside of the snorkel, you can change it from one to two if it's a different type of snorkel. And then, so like maybe we made a scuba pack for going deep diving, right? So then item number is one. And then we're checking that on the play, or we're setting that on the player to be one. And then when attach ends with player, we set wearing to be back to zero because they're no longer wearing a snorkel. And then we set that for the player, same exact code. And then we send event, my event to self for 15 seconds. The reason we're canceling sending this event because it stops this from being sent over and over and over again. What is my event you're asking? Well, my event is a return to original position code. What it does is it says move to original position on self. So remember this code is running on the headset itself and rotate to original position of self. So this is basically going to return to its original position after 15 seconds. But if the player puts the head, the snorkel back on before the 15 seconds are up, it gets to stay with them. So this is an easy way to keep all of your stuff organized so it doesn't get lost or thrown off the edge of the world. And here we can see our snorkels. We can go into the properties and inside you can see we've got item number set to one. We don't have to set these because that's set inside the script. That was the first thing we did on world create. We've created them as interactive objects. We've made them both grabbable and have physics. You can say we've set them to soft wood and we don't need to do any other attributes. We did make them grabbable, left two-handed grab on because that's fine. And we made it anchor, so it anchors to the owner's head. So this is how it sticks to the person's head in case you had any questions about that as well. So that is how you can make some really advanced code and there's so much you can do with that. Like I was just saying, you could have multiple different types of snorkels attached to someone's head. You could do different types of hats, get you into certain clubs. Like there is so many different ways to use this. As you can see, we've already got three within my, my sight line, three different respawn points. We've got another one down below the water in the cave. And imagine how, if you had a larger world than this, you could have so many different of these running, doing different things. As you can see, we've created a layer of triggers around the edge, and that is how we go and respawn. And down here, you can see there's a giant square trigger. So you just make it really big. You can stretch it with your hands. And so whenever someone falls off the world, they're always going to respawn back to the original spawn location. There is amazing potential here, and I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. Bye for real this time. Bye.